What's up YouTube? It is Ben with Bearded Spruce back for a super exciting DIY project today. This floating vanity that's made out of 100% plywood <clears throat> and this install of this beautiful vanity sink as well as the faucet is all coming to you. I walk through what tools that you're going to need for this project as well as all the materials that you need as well. And then I walk through a step-by-step -step guide on how to build. I've also used the same technique and the same build uh, for a floating bench. It's pretty much the same exact thing. This thing is solid as a rock. I'm not going to sit on it, but you totally could. Uh, and I think it turned out amazing. Uh, I'll have all the chapters listed in the description below, which will show up as segments and chapters in this video so if you want to hop ahead or go back to a specific section on how to do something feel free to i'm so excited that you guys are here for this build i think it turned out amazing um, i'll do some final reveal close-ups at the end of this video but in the meantime i just wanted to say thanks for joining and feel free to subscribe to my channel I have a lot of other content that I'll link to my channel up here uh, that you can check out, such as a super popular one right now is a modern Adirondack chair, um, as well as a modern barn door build. Um, all of these things I try to keep you guys in mind as I'm building them to make them as cheap and as easy as possible. Without further ado, let's jump back into a few days ago when I started this project. All right, so here we are with a clean slate before we build anything. And the first thing we need to do is measure the space that we're going to put the countertop in. So the top of the counter is going to be 30 inches above the floor, which is right around here. And what I'm going to do is take a few measurements. So. Uh, first thing, we're going to measure the back of the wall, which is going to be 36 and a half inches. And then I'm going to measure the front of the wall, which is going to be 36 and a quarter. We're going to start by cutting it to 36 and a half inches, and then I'll have to trim a little bit off of the front uh, to make it perfectly fit in this space. Other thing that we need to measure is how deep we want to go. The um, sink itself is nine and a half inches deep. And so I think what I'm going to do is go 18 inches deep because the faucet will have to be behind it and I want some extra room around the sink in general. We'll talk about the waterfall piece is um, going to be about five inches, I think will look really good. And so we'll have to cut everything to 36 and a half inches wide. And then I'll show you how to cut the waterfall effect um, on my table saw. So let's hop into the garage and talk about all the supplies that were needed. Let's go over some things that we're going to need for this project. So start with the wood supplies. So we need, for this project for me, I'm going to need two two by fours. You might need some more or less depending on how big of a space that you're making this counter for. Definitely do the math and figure that out for yourself. Mine is going to be 36 inches wide by 18 inches deep. And so I'm going to need just over one of these two by fours. Down here below everything, all these supplies, is the piece of maple plywood. I was able to get away with just one of these uh, pre-cut two by four foot pieces of plywood. I love maple, it's my favorite, but there's birch, there's oak. You can pick any type of plywood. I've seen a lot of um, white oak recently that might also be called white wood that has a really cool almost zebra stripe uh, at Lowe's and Home Depot. Or you can get a full sheet of 4x8 plywood if you want to use some scraps for some other projects in the future. 
Either way, it's up to you. Just make sure that you have the right size piece of wood. Currently, even with lumber prices still kind of higher than I'm used to, uh, this piece of plywood was $36, and then each one of these pieces of two by four were right around six and a half to seven dollars a piece. All in with the sink, the faucet, all the plumbing fixtures, uh, all this wood, the glue, um, everything except for the tools that you see here. Uh, it's gonna be about $300 total. Most of that is because my wife wanted this awesome clay fired sink basin. You can do it for a lot less expensive if you go ProClean or some other uh, cheaper material for the actual sink itself. I would say the sink itself was right around $200 and then everything else that you're going to see in this video equaled up to right around maybe a little less than a hundred bucks total, um, including the faucet, the plumbing stuff. Let's jump into what might seem a little overwhelming at first, but I promise it will make sense as we go through the step-by-step -step guide. So first thing you're going to need, like I said, is the two by fours to fasten the two by fours to the wall. Uh, you'll need a stud finder as well as some kind of interior or exterior screws. It doesn't really matter. A drill of your choice, some kind of level. This would be the simple version that you probably have at your house. Uh, you can also use your phone as a level, whatever you choose to use as a level, go for it. Um, I would highly suggest getting something like this for projects around the house if you're gonna continue doing stuff. But today I'm actually gonna use a mixture of this awesome laser level that I also got on Amazon. Uh, you'll need some kind of hole cutting apparatus. I have my hole cutting set here that is super easy, but you could also use a jigsaw. We'll, we'll get to that in the future. And then I'm actually gonna use a mixture of this liquid nails and to fasten the countertop to the two by four structure as well as a nail gun, um, but you could also use screws if you want and fill in the screw holes um, with some wood putty or something like that before you seal it. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is actually cut the two by fours. So the first two cuts I'm gonna make are the width cuts. So I'm gonna do 36 and a half, two of those, and then we'll get to the other pieces. All right, so for the, the side pieces that I'm gonna cut, they're gonna be, the total depth is gonna be 18 inches. And so I'm gonna subtract the depth of both of my two by fours, which are actually an inch and a half a piece. So I'm gonna subtract a total of three inches from those. And so I get the thickness of the depth of the two by fours that are on the front and back plus the, the middle piece that I need. So 18 minus three is 15 inches. So we're gonna cut two 15 inch pieces, which is sadly where the second two by four is gonna come in for me. But let's cut those and then we'll hop downstairs to show you how to attach them. All right, so now that I have all of my stuff in the basement, I'm going to start by figuring out exactly where we want the top of the two by fours to be. So the wood I'm working with, the plywood I'm working with is three quarters of an inch. And so I'm going to take 30 inches where we want the top of the plywood to be, subtract it three quarters of an inch. So that's 29 and a quarter. So I'm going to mark that a few places on the wall. 29 and a quarter. Now that I have the hash marks on the wall, exactly where I want the top of the two by fours, I lined up my laser level, as you can kind of see on the, the red line. You can see that I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it's not quite level on the left side compared to the right side. 
So I'm going to flip the switch to self-level and now it will completely self-level and so I'm going to bring it down to exactly where we want those two by, two by fours to land and now it will complete it will have a complete the perfect level mark on the wall so now I can use that as a reference point as I hang my two by fours so now before we start hanging the last thing we need to do is use a stud finder to find where the anchor points we're going to use um, on the wall are so i'm going to hang the the back one first and some studs typically on a wall there's one every 16 inches so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mark There. Looks like there's one here, and then there's usually one in the corner. All right, so now that I have the studs marked, which is going to be hard to see on this wallpaper, I'm going to hang my first 2x4. All right, so I'm going to grab my 2x4 and just double check that it fits. All right, so this back piece fits nicely, and what I'm going to do is translate where the studs are to this piece of wood. I'm going to start my screws on a solid piece, so I'm going to start them on my lap where those hash marks are. So I'm going to make sure that my laser level is right above the piece of wood. And then I'm going to hold it with one hand while I secure it to the wall. Of course, my drill battery died as I was filming and installing this. So life lesson is make sure that you always charge your batteries for your drills or whatever tools before you, uh, the night before you get started with the project. So once the first one is secure, we're going to secure the other two and basically I just kind of get out of the way of the laser level and make sure that the laser is just perfectly right above the 2x4 and then we secure these. So now that's nice and secure, we're going to do the same process for the side pieces keeping that same level line as we work on both sides. So I'm gonna find the studs again, and then come back and um, secure the side pieces, and then I'll come back with you guys for the last front piece. All right, so now that I have the three sides on, I'm gonna put the front piece on, which I took away the laser level at this point, and I double checked both of these to make sure that they are 100% level. And then to attach the front one, I'm actually going to use some adhesive. And I'm going to show you a quick trick if you're working alone. It helps to have some of these clamps handy around. Um, and I'll show you how to use that in this application. But first thing we're going to do is I'm actually going to pre-drill some screws really quick on both sides where we're going to attach it to these side pieces you'll notice that i 
made them kind of a slanted angle towards the outside. And the reason being is sometimes if you get too close to the edge of the wood, it will actually split it, which is fine. But um, you want to try to avoid that as much as possible, but you still want to hit these studs. So I'm going to add a little adhesive to both sides. You're just, and then we're going to take these two pieces and I'm going to have my handy clamp hold this side level while I screw in the other side. So you kind of just overlap on both pieces and you're not looking for perfect on this side. You're just trying to have the clamp hold it in place while you secure it. And then you can actually leave the clamp here while you start this guy if, it's, if it looks like it's level. And then let's double check these. And that is perfect. So I'll probably throw two more screw, one more screw on each side, and then we'll be done with the platform for the plywood. What we're gonna do is cut the width first, and then I'll show you how to cut this piece of wood for the waterfall effect. Um, I will mention that you don't have to use a table saw for either one of these cuts. I'll link to a video on uh, cutting techniques up here right now if you want to check that out. With the table saw it's a lot easier to have an accurate cut but there are ways to do this with a skill saw. I'm going to cut the length which for me it's 36 and a half. All right, so now we have the leftover piece. I put the other scrap piece over there for a future project. And what we're gonna do is now I have the table saw set up at a 45 degree miter. For the top of the pieces of two by four, which is the structure, the frame, is 18 inches from the wall to the, the front. And so the bottom of my piece of plywood, which is the important measurement here, needs to be 18 inches from this to the front edge of the blade. Uh, make sure that anytime you're making adjustments to anything of the, around the blade, that the saw's off, even though you have that safety feature in the break. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this first miter cut at the 45 degree angles, of course 18 inches deep, and then I'll go over what to do next. All right, so now is the interesting part. So we've cut this at a 45 degree angle and this would match up perfectly to that 45 degree angle. The problem is to have the wood grain match, this is the side we actually care about. So what we're gonna have to do now is measure this length, which is five and a half inches. Now we're gonna have to basically cut a miter that will be a triangle here um, with this blade to perfectly match up with this edge. So I'll, uh, I'll line things up and then show you what that will look like. All right, so like I mentioned, I lined it up so the top part of the blade that's going to meet the wood is going to perfectly align with this top edge that will match perfectly with that um, front edge. So I'm going to cut this and then I'll show you how they match up. All 
All right, so now that we got all that cut, let me see if I can show you the best angle. So that's gonna line up to be 100% perfect at the top. And you can see that it looks like if we do this, we didn't cut any out of the piece. All we did is cut this triangle at 45 degree angles, which will give that perfect waterfall effect. So we got both of the pieces cut. We're going to install it. And I'm going to use this construction adhesive to actually secure it. I'll do the top first and then I'll do the front piece and pretty much every time I do something like this there's some unevenness with the walls and so I'll do some caulking to cover up our sins but I think it's a pretty good fit overall and I'm just going to wiggle around to spread out the adhesive a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to install this piece first and then I'm going to use my nail gun to secure everything together. Um, and I'll show you why. And you'll probably scrape up the wall a little bit throughout this process and that's okay. Um, you can just repaint. The wall that I was worried about was that back wall because it would be tough to touch up wallpaper. So we're gonna put some adhesive on the two by four itself. And then I'm also gonna put some adhesive in this seam where the two pieces are going to meet together. Because the, the construction adhesive is what is actually going to hold it long-term. You can see that it's a snug fit. And then like I said, I'm going to use my nail I'm going to use my nail gun to secure it. But you can use screws if you feel better about that. I just like the little 18 gauge nails because they're easy to uh, to fill in and cover up once it's done. secure and in place and nailed together. Um, I'm going to just come back with a 220 grit sandpaper and sand the whole thing. Um, and then I'm going to come back and do some wood putty, sand it one more time. Um, but really you just want the rough edges um, and this top seam to kind of blend together. I'm back after filling the holes with some wood putty. I actually got this really cool kit on Amazon that I'll link to in the affiliate links below, but I really liked this color that came with it. Uh, it's the white maple color, and it doesn't 100% blend in, but I kind of like how it just kind of like softly um, kind of shows on, on the wood. And so now we're going to work on sealing it um, I'm using this clear satin, uh, crystal clear poly coat. This one's water-based. If you don't mind the yellow, yellowish color, you could do an oil base if you chose um, to. But I think what I'm gonna do is just do more than the recommend, recommended amount of coats. 
This one says two coats and I'll probably do three to four, maybe even more, depending on how I feel um, as I go. All right, so it's been a few days. I did a number of coats on this. Um, I really wanted to make sure I protected it well. Um, so I think I did four coats and I tried to lay it on pretty thick for each one of those coats. And now um, it's time to install the sink as well as the faucet. Um, these are just placed here. I haven't installed them yet. Basically what I did is measure for the center of the countertop and then I wanted the sink a little bit farther um, towards the front but you can kind of place it wherever you want and then I'm just going to grab a sharpie and mark the hole in the bottom of the sink trace where I want this guy to be installed. Once I have both holes traced out, I'm going to remove this stuff. So now that I have both of the hole locations traced out, I'm gonna use my hole saw. So now that I've drilled both holes, I'm gonna install the sink and the faucet per the installation guide that came with the kit. I will link to the kit in the description below because it has great reviews and so far it's a pretty awesome kit um, that I can see. So let me install it and then we'll come back for a final reveal. As you can see, everything is installed now. I did all the plumbing ahead of time. And then when I installed the sink, I used some construction adhesive. Uh, and then I also did a bead of clear caulking to waterproof underneath the vessel sink. So now it won't move anywhere on you. I installed a nice little button stopper. Um, a push stopper, which is super nice. And then this faucet, I think just turned out super well. Um, I also didn't mention this before, but you can see I did a trim piece back here to ensure that no moisture bounces back behind the piece of, you know, the floating shelf. And then I caulked and painted the edges as well. Feel free to subscribe if you're still watching. Um, I do about one video a month, some kind of project around the house that I feel like is beneficial to have you guys tune in and learn. And feel free to check out my other videos. In the meantime, we'll see you next time.